we're going to move along here to our next and final topic, our universe. Our universe. Is time travel possible? Hmm. Very interesting, I must say. Time travel, it's usually, of course, related to like fantasy novels, science fiction, and things that are like what ifs, like things that could just never happen. We all look at it as impossible, but it's actually been a plausible reality for decades. I know, maybe this is the first time you're hearing that, but it actually has been in the scientific world and when it comes to quantum physics and everything else, it's been a, a pretty much a, a huge reality. In 2014, a group of scientists from the University of Queensland, Australia, they simulated how time-traveling photons might behave. And they discovered that at the quantum level, the grandfather paradox, the phenomenon which makes time travel impossible can actually be resolved. Their research, titled Experimental Simulation of Closed Timelike Curves, you can find that it was published on... Um, it was the latest issue of Nature Communications. You can find that on nature.com. Their study, in that study, the researchers used photons or single particles of light to replicate quantum particles traveling back through time. Upon analyzing that, the particles' behavior, right? They were analyzing the particles' behavior. The scientists, they realized that something strange was happening. The properties of quantum particles are fuzzy or uncertain to start with. So this gives them enough wiggle room to avoid inconsistent time travel situations, explained co-author Professor Timothy Ralph. He said, our study pro proves and provides insight into where and how nature might behave differently from what our theories predict. And in their experiment, they made use of the closely related fictitious case where the photon travels through normal space time and interacts with another photon that is stuck in a time traveling loop through a wormhole known as a closed time like curve, a CTC. Now simulating the behavior of that second photon, they were able to study the behavior of the first. And the results show that the consistent evaluation, the evolution from the first to the second can be achieved when preparing the second photon in just the right way. That's pretty cool, honestly. The grandfather paradox says that should a time traveler go back in time, he would mistakenly prevent his grandparents from meeting, right? If it, should he go back, he would act, he could do that and therefore prevent his own birth from ever happening. But if we had never been born, then there was no way that he could have traveled back in time to begin with. That's the grandfather paradox. That's why it's just so difficult for us to wrap our heads around time travel because it almost doesn't really make sense. Albert Einstein's special and general relative theories had led physicists um, to believe that time travel could be possible. Special relativity says that space and time are aspects of the same thing, what we call the space-time continuum. It says that time can speed up or it can slow down relative to how fast you are going relative to something else. So general relativity claims that traveling backwards in time relies on a space-time path. It just needs to have a path, such as a CTC that returns to the starting point in space. It just needs to have an a, a point A and point B, um, and that CCC, and then it comes at an earlier time. In 1991, it was predicted that quantum mechanics could bypass some of the paradoxes that Einstein's theory um, of relati relativity had established with phantom <clears throat> particles acting nearly outside the domain of physics. Hmm. Not everyone does agree that time travel is possible, however. Stephen Hawking, for instance, he reveals in a BBC documentary that it simply just cannot happen. <laughs> he wants nothing to do with it. He doesn't think it can happen. Welcome to the world of, phantom, of um, quantum physics, I'm sorry, where pioneering physics Neil Bohr once said, if quantum mechanics hasn't profoundly shocked you, you haven't understood it yet. So, what do we think? Do we think that this is possible? Do we think that um, this can really, really work? Could it, could it be that we're looking at it the wrong way? It's quite possible. When I was looking into another article here, is time travel real? Is time travel, um, or is time an illusion? and how hypnosis weighs into this. It led me into this, this, this frame of mind that it's possible when we are talking about time travel 
and um, all these amazing things, we're not looking at it from the um, from the perspective that we should be. Um, if we perceive time travel, and when we envision it, we see physical, physically our bodies leaving and moving over into different ports and stuff like that, then it's possible that that can lead to doubt. And it's possible that it's like, yeah, people would say that's impossible. But if we consider time travel in less of a physical sense, and we're more open to transporting our actual self, right, the soul, the, the, inner, the inner spark through the metaphysical realm, of hypnotherapy, then that is a whole different reality. And that is real. Um, it's real, and it can be that when we're talking about consciousness, consciousness doesn't have matter, right? It's, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it's not matter. It's not a physical thing, not a tangible thing. Consciousness doesn't follow physical per, um, perspex. So it's all in our head, more specifically in our soul. There's this posture that everything that we experience is put in our path to teach us something. We've all been taught that. We've all heard that. And I'm actually a firm believer of that. However, sometimes we don't remember an event because our mind is trying to protect us from that harm that it's already caused. I've also noticed this about myself. I'm remembering memories in a different way as to possibly maybe make the experience a better one and maybe easier to go back and remember. But we do something called disassociation, which is a protective mechanism of the mind. And it helps, you know, the younger self cope with the having experiences of trauma, of those horrible experiences so that you can, you know, sometimes it's just better to repress them, for them to be forgotten than for you to constantly be reminded of them. That's what disassociation is. Now, these emotions and experiences, they can be resurfaced, right, and explored we can now dive into, and this isn't something new, you can do this right now. You yourself can be standing here physically, and like I've mentioned before in many other topics, you can be thinking about something else. You can be living in the past, just in your mind, just in that, in that little universe, in your, in your own little world. You know, dreams for instance, it's like a daydream. You can be sitting here, but you can literally see everything that's going on in you know, another lifetime. Maybe it's already happened or maybe it's deja vu or whatever it is. But that's that's what we're we're focusing on here. So they use this. They use these um your emotions and your experiences. They usually use them to heal the patient, right? By assessing what happened and through hypnotherapy they try to figure out how to bring up these experiences and ba basically try to get an understanding of what these experiences are and see what they need to do next. Um, regarding these experiences. So in that sense, time travel is very real. It's a great therapeutic tool for working on core issues when done with a trained professional, of course. For the, for the curious, it offers an unparalleled look into your personal history and is truly an eye-opening experience to discover another place, a wrinkle in time, and another you. So I think, when I think about time travel, I do originally think about the physical the physical, actual transporting my body. <laughs> um, and wormholes, I think about wormholes and how, you know, these kinds of things have already been presumed as possible. Um, actually traveling to different dimensions is not too different from the concept of time traveling. Because we don't know what's going on in the other dimensions. We don't know what the time is there. We know that we're probably traveling um, certain light speeds, which would be presumed that it's, you know, different times. <laughs> So I do associate it on a physical level, but I love that. I love that there's another way to look at it, and there's probably a more deeper way to look at it, which is that metaphysical, spiritual, more emotional, internal, internal view. And that's something that we totally do deal with every single day. We definitely do travel to, through time every day that we think of the past. So I would love for you to look further more into time traveling on a physical scale with the wormholes and let me know what you guys think as well as how you feel about hypnotherapy and diving into your past and looking at another version of yourself through your mind, just doing it sitting at home. And do you perceive that as time travel? Thanks for joining us here today at Believe. I am Vanessa. Look for us at youtube.com forward slash believe loves you as well as believe.love. That's our wonderful website. Apple users believe iTunes.com and Android users believe Android.com. Thanks again for having us.